Hello, Allen ISD middle school trumpet players. This is Dr. Fairfield, and I miss seeing many of you in person, and hopefully we'll be able to do that again soon. But in the meantime, I hope that you and your families are safe and that you're well. And uh, what I thought I'd do is give you a little introduction to the all region material that you'll be working on the first and second etude uh, over the next few months. Many of you have already started that. Uh, and what I did uh, coming up is I recorded both of the etudes, the first etude and the second etude at uh, the slowest recommended tempo and the quickest recommended tempo. So the first etude I played, I believe at um, 72 or 76 and 90. And then the uh, second etude I played at 60 and 66. I do announce on the on the videos before I start playing what the tempo actually is. Uh, and hopefully that'll give you a little reference uh, when you're practicing. You can go, I don't remember how this is supposed to sound. And you can go back to this video and uh, and go, oh, okay, this is how it is. Uh, what I would recommend, I don't necessarily mean for these videos to be um, uh, a lesson, uh, anything. I do go into a little detail in the second video especially um, because I do think that requires a little bit of explanation. Um, but uh, I would recommend that you practice, especially this first technical etude, at a very slow tempo to start with and get that under your fingers and get it in your ears and what does, the, what does it sound like, what does it feel like, and you start to establish really good performance habits. And once you have established those habits, then you can play that etude at whatever speed you would like to do. And you just refer back to the habits that you built in this slow practice period. So if you would like to discuss that a little more in detail than I do on this video, please contact me and, uh, and we can have a lesson or two or three or 20. And uh, I'd be happy to chat with you about uh, how I approach these etudes, my practice suggestions and my performance suggestions as well. But this is just hopefully will serve as a little reference for you guys to say, okay, this is what they are supposed to sound like, uh, and then you guys can get to work. Okay, enjoy. Okay, let's get started. This will be quarter note at 76 on the metronome, and I'm going to have uh, the eighth note subdivision on my metronome, so I'll turn on quarter note at 76 with an eighth note subdivision, and we'll play this first day too. One, two, 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 one, and... number two. This time I will leave my metronome on a quarter note pulse. Unlike the first etude where I had the eighth note subdivision, I'm going to leave it on a quarter note this time because of the differences in subdivision in the measures. Like the first measure we're going to subdivide triplets, next measure we're going to subdivide eighth notes. Uh, there are some sixteenth note subdivision as well, so <clears throat> occasionally we will uh, subdivide in different ways. We're going to subdivide in, in groups of three or groups of two or four. Uh, so I'll just leave my metronome on a steady quarter note pulse. Uh, there's a ritarando at the end. Uh, which for these recorded examples, I'm not going to observe. Um, I'm going to just go straight through at the at the tempo right there at the end until I get to the fermata, and then we'll do our best to ignore uh, the metronome and just end in a uh, in a regular way. And once I once I get to the end of the piece, then I'll show you without my metronome on how I would interpret uh, the ritardando there. So the first tempo we're going to play is going to be a quarter note at sixty. 
second one will be quarter note 66, but we'll start with 16. One, two, three. show you how I treat that retardando there at the end. So it's got a day crescendo underneath. would then go ahead and carry that decrescendo through 16 as well just so it's kind of moving in one direction or the other and it's not all going to be the same volume level so I carry my decrescendo all the way to the end of the piece and I do hold my fermata for a good long time uh, and I'm playing you know if you're going to subdivide it out it's closer probably to an eighth note pickup uh, instead of a 16th into measure 16 uh, just to give it a little more finality right uh, and it also it can be a little bit longer because of the length of the fermata. You don't really have to divide that into um, 4, T, K, Ta, 1. Um, you can hold that fermata a good length of time and that will allow you then to, to uh, get a good pretty healthy uh, pickup note into the last note. Okay, next tempo will be um, quarter note equals 66. So we'll go up six clicks and we'll do this again. Same thing at the end. Uh, I'll play through pretty much in time until I get to the fermata. We'll go back to uh, the pick of the measure 14 and I'll show you how to treat the, uh, the Rallentando Ritardando one last time. <clears throat> Quarter note 66 and one, two, three. Show you how I would treat that Rolandando retardando slow down at the end. Uh, I'm going to pick the measure or pick up the measure 14 uh, to the end at this little bit quicker tempo, uh, and then show you how I would treat the retardando one final time. And again, I'm 
carrying my decrescendo through the end of the piece there at 16, just to give it some interest, um, kind of creating some tension, releasing the tension, and I want that uh, to be as less as possible at the end. All right, hope these videos will be helpful, and good luck on your audition.